Hi all, this is Karthik from Design School by WP Algorithm, the place where I teach you how to design, build and customize your WordPress websites. If you are new here, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any updates. Let's get into today's video. In this video, we'll talk about Elementor Pro 2.8's new table of contents widget, which is really smart. I'll show you how it works and it also helps you get better search engine results so you you can make your website appear in the same format or in the same structure in search engine results which is pretty cool i'll show you how it works and then there's another feature in elementor pro 2.8 which is the pro gallery lazy loading i'll also show you that so in this video i'll basically cover how this table of contents widget works and what you need to know without wasting any further time let's get into it this table of contents widget works best with the theme builder so you basically go to theme builder, create a new single post design. So this is the design that will be applied when you create a new post by using Gutenberg interface. So you'll basically define a design for it. I currently have a design for my single post. So every new post I create will have this format author and date and the title of the post. You can see that here when I click on it, you can see it's post title and here I have post content, which is basically supplied by everything from within the Gutenberg interface. So it comes from the Gutenberg interface. All this is added on the Gutenberg side. So whatever I add here, headings, subheadings, paragraphs, images, all of them come from the Gutenberg interface. And then I also have a post widget, which also has a couple of headings here. So the way this particular table of contents widget works is by scanning all the heading tags on your page. Let me drag in the table of contents widget. You can also use it with any regular page, but it better works with the theme builders templates because it becomes a part of the design. So I just dragged in my table of contents widget. It's automatically positioned onto the topmost side of the column. If it isn't, you can click on this column, you can change the vertical element of the widget. If I change it to middle, you can see that it's placed onto the middle of the column, but I want it on the top so that we can also make it sticky so it just stays right there so click on the table of contents widget itself go to motion effects and let's also make it sticky top so that way it's always there for the user to click and navigate to the place he wants and you won't see the preview in the Elementor interface you need to click on this eye icon and click on preview or view the actual page itself that's when you can see these anchor links so the way this table of content widget works is that it scans for all the headings. As you can see here, it will scan for these particular heading tags. H1 is basically the title of your page or the post that you're in. So I just have HTML tag of H1 here. If I make it H2, even that will be reflected in this particular table of contents widget. You have to reload it and that will also appear in this particular table of content. Let's do that. I'll update this and reload this page. So when I reloaded the page, and when I made this particular post title an H2, it's also reflected in the table of contents widget. And all of the headings are basically anchor links. So on your actual page, when you click on this particular element, it will take you to the place where this particular element is. So if I scroll down here and if I click on Elementor Pro 2.8 release post, it will take me back to the place where I have this heading. Anyway, we, it's always a good idea to have H1 as post title and the rest all should be h2s so it will scan for all the headings so here it scanned for h2 this is the second h2 and these are all h3s these are h3s and this one is an h4 that's the reason why it's positioned within this h3 right next to its immediate h3 so that's how it works hierarchically and you can also choose the way it works so you can click on table of contents widget and in additional options you can see what word wrap does now you can see that this is a pretty big subheading or heading and when i choose word wrap you can see that it aligns it perfectly to the marker you can also choose to have a minimize box so you will have this minimize box button you can also choose the icon for minimizing and maximizing the particular box and then you can also choose the breakpoint at which the box should be minimized hierarchical view like i said all the h2s will be topmost headings so these are all h2s and if you have any h3s after the h2s 
they will be nested into the immediate H2s and if you have any H4s they will be nested within the immediate H3s that's how it works so this is the way in which the search engines will actually scan your content and even better is that this particular table of contents widget will be available in the search engines results pages exactly in the same format so that would improve user experience and since it's adding a lot of links on your website there is a high chance that you'll get user to your website so that's also good for seo you can also choose to collapse sub items by sub items it means things that are nested as you can see here it collapses all the H h3s and h4s it just has h2s here but we also want the sub items in the particular table of contents widget because that's how it works and here we have chosen to include all the heading tags that we need you can also exclude anchors by selectors i'll get to this in a bit and you can choose the markers as numbers or bullets we choose bullets and you can also choose an icon for each bullet so you can click on this and choose anything that you want from your font or some library but i think number numbers look better i'll just choose numbers here i just changed the color of the icon here and now it's clearly visible so when you minimize and maximize and also the breakpoint so i have the breakpoint at 768 currently so only at this you can see this particular breakpoint or this particular icon and at this particular resolution you won't see it so that's the way it works now you can see that it scans headings and it includes them even if you want it or you don't want it so there is the question here is how can you actually avoid this how can you make this stop scanning the things that you don't want right so for this particular widget or within the container you should have a class that says not to scan so that's the reason why they have a selector box here so within table of contents you can choose to exclude and here you need to have selectors the selectors commonly would be header and footer because you don't want the headings in your header and footer to appear in the table of contents if you really want them to appear in the table of contents well you particularly can but we don't want it also we don't want the post titles within the recommended posts to appear in this particular thing so let's click on navigator so this is the section more post section so i'll click on more post section i'll go to advanced and i'll give it a class not me so you can either give a class or an id so not me please either way it will work so copy the class name so class name will be without dot and you've been watching this on this channel for quite a time now you can go to table of contents you can choose to exclude and the class name should have a dot before it and as you enter the class name you can see that all the things that are there within that particular container or that particular section are excluded so we chose the column that has all the headings so don't stop here more to explore and even these post titles are excluded from the table of content widget just by entering its particular class name so it's that easy now let's go back i'll click on navigator again i'll click on more posts you can also copy the id instead of class name and even that way it would work so you can go to exclude i'll just delete this class name and now the headings appear here and before id you should have a hash name so even now it works just the same so you can either give an id or a class name a unique id or a class name and make them exclude and you'd also want to type header and footer this should be a comma separated list so you can have something like this that way you're making sure that the headings that are present in the header or your footer are not scanned and presented in the table of contents widget but if you really want them to appear you can simply remove all these and all the headings on your page will be appearing in this particular table of contents widget so that's how it works so we are done customizing it i'll remove all the conditions for now just to show you i'll update it i'll click on preview and i'll just show you how these anchor links work now my preview is loaded 
and you can watch the table of contents we did here. As I scroll through, you can see that the particular heading that we scroll to is highlighted in here. And as I scroll again, you can now see that it's showing me that I've scrolled to this particular section or this particular anchor link. When I scroll back, you can see these and these are highlighted. When I scroll down, you can see that those particular items are being highlighted as I scroll through. You can now see that I've entered Don't Stop Here and More to Explore and both of them are highlighted. And as I reach Don't Stop Here, only that particular heading is highlighted. As I scroll down, you can see all of them are highlighted. So that's how it works. You can also click them to scroll to that particular page. That's the reason to have a table of contents. Let's also add a background to this particular table of contents widget because it would make it more readable. So I'll just add this particular background. So now you understand that the table of contents widget scans the headings. So it will first scan for H2s and if it finds any H3s after scanning H2, it will put them right next to H2s. And if it finds any H4s after H3s, it will put them right under H3s. That's how it works. Let me show you the Gutenberg side of things. So let me show you how this particular post is composed. I'll click on edit post and that would take me to Gutenberg interface. Let my Gutenberg interface load. So my Gutenberg interface is loaded. I'll also bring up the settings icon and this is my title and this is my head heading which is H2 and this is some paragraph. This is again H3. So that's the reason why the first subheading is positioned right next to first heading. And then we have some content. Next, I have an H3 and that's the reason why it's also positioned right next to this particular H2, which is this is the first heading. And after that, I also have sub 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 heading and it's positioned right next to or under this particular H3. Similarly, these are H3s in the good in the element interface. I basically added these from the Elementor design. So when I click on it, you can see that it's an H2 and even this is an H2. That's the reason why they're on the same level in the hierarchy. And then within the post widget, you can see that the title of post is H3. That's the reason why they're all ex they're all nested into this particular H2. So that's the way it works. Simply you just enter your content. You just define a single page post or single custom post type template so if you have created a maybe a custom post type such as reviews recipes or anything you can also make it work the same way all you need to remember is that you need to have all the headings included except h1 and if you have any items included that you wish you don't want you can click on exclude and always type header comma footer in here. Those are the HTML tags that will have your header and footer of your website. So they'll naturally be uh, excluded from the table of contents widget. And if you want to have any other things to be ex excluded, you can simply give the section a particular class name or an ID and exclude it the way I showed you. Always have header and footer in this so that all the headings in the header and footer won't appear in the table of contents area and also they won't appear in the search engines result page. If you think that's really important, you can simply remove header and footer. So that's how the table of content widget works. And when you have the pro gallery widget on any of your page, post or a template, all the images are lazy loaded, which means you can see that on the element side of the interface, I have these particular gallery. So when I go to the particular post to view them, as I scroll through, they're only loaded as I scroll through. This is called lazy loading. It will actually save you load time as they're not initially loaded. Your website loads faster and these are basically loading images on demand or on scroll. So that's a really brilliant way of optimizing things since gallery will have high resolution images usually and having them lazy load on your website improves your website speed. So that's another improvement. So those are the changes in Elementor Pro 2.8. This is really a cool update. And the most important feature is the table of contents widget, uh, how it works.
if you have any questions let me know in the comments down below i'm ready to help you that's it for now hope you guys liked it if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up i'll talk to you in the next video peace